with Helen Carnell and Gregory Steele. But not over. North East boxer Glenn McCrory says a court case almost cost him everything, including his life. You know, I was at one point, you know, I did not want to be here. I wanted out and then, you know, tried to get, you know, tried to take my own life. And, you know, that's, that's, that's horrible when, when you've got a, you've got young children. For protective equipment, the construction industry calls for better PPE for women. As some are forced to wear men's clothes to work. Healing pause. We meet the therapy dog, helping to keep kids calm and in school. Thanks for joining us. First tonight, then, a 20-year-old man's been sentenced to nine years in prison after he crashed his car, killing three of his teenaged friends in North Yorkshire. Joshua Chapman drove his Alfa Romeo at grossly excessive speeds late on a stretch of a dark country road in July 2022 in Beedale before crashing into a tree. Well, our correspondent Rachel Bullock was in court for us. Rachel, the mothers of all three victims making emotional statements today. Yes, that's right. All three women telling the young man whose driving killed their sons that his arrogant, selfish showing off has devastated their families and their lives. And in the words of the judge, the harm caused by Joshua Chapman that night could hardly have been greater, robbing these families of their much-loved sons and taking the lives of three highly promising young men. Joshua Chapman was 18 and had passed his driving test only 10 months before three of his friends were killed instantly in his car. The court heard that late on the night of July 29th, 2022, 17-year-old Louis Banks, 18-year-old Tommy Shovels and 18-year-old Aaron Bell had got into Chapman's Alfa Romeo to go to a nearby McDonald's. There, Chapman was caught on CCTV speeding around the car park before heading out onto the twisting B6268 Beedale to Massam Road. One of the passengers, Aaron, texted a friend from inside the car. It read, Oh my God, please save me. Moments later, Chapman had sped through a red roadworks light and turning a sharp bend at 75 miles an hour, lost control, hitting a tree. All three passengers died instantly. Chapman survived. Aaron's mother, Nicola Percy, told the court today that Aaron was my son, my world, and my best buddy. Mrs. Percy told the court that she'd been horrified to discover that Chapman had set up a TikTok account explaining how to make cars, particularly Alfa Romeos, go faster. There are no words, she said, and turning to Chapman, who was in the dock, she added, there are days when I don't want to get out of bed. The mothers of the two other boys, Tommy and Louie, spoke of how their indescribable grief walks beside them every day, how their beautiful boys have had such promising lives snatched from them. Chapman's barrister said the now 20-year-old feels colossal guilt and has had suicidal thoughts, disqualifying him from driving for 10 years and jailing him for nine years, four months, the judge told Chapman that he's caused a catastrophic loss of three families. Families who are left with holes that can never be filled. Rachel Bullock, ITV News, Teesside Crown Court. A mother has denied deliberately burning and later shaking her three-year-old son so hard it killed him. Christina Robinson's accused of murdering her son Delania in Ashamore near Durham in November 2022. Today she said it was simply not true that she had deliberately harmed him. 
by reporter Tom Barton was in court. Tom, what did Christina Robinson say today? Well, the court has heard that Dulania has suffered severe burns. He had 19 tramline injuries on his body, consistent with being hit by a cane and a major brain injury, which caused his death. Now, Christina Robinson has admitted hitting him with a cane and today also admitted slapping him because she said she was going off the scriptures and doing what the book says as part of the black Hebrew Israelite religion that she follows. Today she was asked if she caused all the injuries to that little boy. She replied, no, that's simply not true. Asked if she deliberately and forcefully put him in boiling hot water, she replied, no, that's simply not true. It was put to her that you were fed up with that little boy being an inconvenience. She replied, he was never an inconvenience. Asked if she shook him so hard that you killed him, she replied, that's simply not true. I did not shake my son. Now, after Dulania collapsed, it took more than 19 minutes for Christina Robinson to call an ambulance. And it was put to her that you did not call 999 to try to protect yourself from the fact the prosecution say that she caused the burns and had shaken him. No, she replied, that's simply not true. Christina Robinson denies murder and child cruelty. The trial will continue tomorrow. Tom, thank you very much. Detectives investigating the disappearance of a woman two years ago have charged a man from County Durham with murder. 24-year-old Alicia Apostolov Boyeran from Greater Manchester disappeared in February 2022. Her body has never been found. 61-year-old David Alex Taylor from Willington in County Durham has today been charged with her murder and will appear before Manchester Crown Courts in May. Well, next tonight, former world boxing champion and sports broadcaster Glenn McCrory has told how a court case last year cost him almost everything, including his life. It took a jury just minutes to throw out three allegations of sexual assault after waitress staff complained he called them pet and darling and touched the elbow of one of them while asking where his food was. He spoke to me ahead of joining an event for the charity Sleep Out at St James's Park next week to raise awareness of homelessness, something he says he's come very close to himself. You, cruiserweight champion! He's the boy from Stanley who won the world cruiserweight title in 1989 before going on to become one of boxing's most respected broadcasters for more than 20 years. But Glenn McCrory's life took a hit more painful than any boxing belt when he was accused of sexual assault in circumstances that made headlines and raised eyebrows. He was quickly cleared of all charges by a jury last year, but today he explained just how much winning that fight has cost him. Rock bottom, rock, lost everything, lost everything. Work dried up completely you know, over the last two years and to the phone not ringing. And then with such a such an awful stigma hanging over your head, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't go out of the house. You know, I'd go for walks at least four in the morning. You know, in the summer. The court case obviously made a lot of headlines with this suggestion that your use of the words pet and darling and touching a waitress on the elbow when you're asking where your food mm. was. Do you know, of all the words. You know, we had our Beavis ain't pet and Beavis. You know, I mean, it's renowned. It's, it's, it's a term of endearment. It's a friendly, friendly thing. So how that could, you know, how common sense never came in at any point with the police or, you know, the judge when we went for, for, when we went for a hearing, how that could never come up. Um, it's, it's just biggest belief. You lost an awful lot financially, but emotionally, this took a heavier toll than I think almost anybody realises. I wouldn't even want to try and explain how bad it is. And, and you know, so many people get there and it's a horrible place when, when you, you try to take your own life. You, know, you, you, yeah. you were at that point? Yeah, I was, I was, I, I was, I was past that point. I was, you know, and, and so that's, that's a, um, you know, so it's, it's a day to day, you know, I'm still getting treatment. It's a day to day, it's a day to day fight just to try and keep yourself in the right mood, keep, you know, keep yourself feeling good, remind yourself, get for walks, remind yourself, you know, your family love you and this sort of stuff. So it's, um, it, 
it, it is, and you know, I, have, I really feel for people, you know, that that are in that sort of are in that sort of predicament where they've lost everything. They haven't got a home. They haven't got, you know, they haven't got friends. I mean, I've got good people to support and good people around me. But it doesn't matter when when you are that low, you know, you don't you don't ask, you don't tell people, you just you just you know you just wallow in in in, in, in sadness, you know, in darkness, and that's that's a horrible. But it is. Greg, it's, it's, that's a horrible, horrible place. You're taking part in a rough sleeping initiative for charity. This clearly is a subject really close to your heart now. It, it is, um, and that's why that's why I thought it was it was you know I had to do that. You know I had to you know I had to speak about it and let people know. People people just automatically think that if you've been on TV or you, you know you've had some success in your life that you're okay and everything's great and you're wealthy and that, you know, and, and that's not the case. There's a lot of people that have done lots of great things and had great jobs that are really, really struggling. Devin Corey, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your for honesty. Thanks very much, Greg. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Well, searing honesty there from Glenn. And if you've been affected by any of the topics discussed in that piece, you can head to our website for links to advice and support. I uh, just want to bring your attention to tonight on our political programme around the house. Tom Sheldrick's guests review the budget and look back on the miners' strike 40 years on with Northumberland MP and ex-miner Ian Lavery calling for an inquiry into the way it was policed. It's essential that we get to the bottom of who made the decisions, who turned the police uh, force against the ordinary hard-working people. You know, I feel for some of the local police guys you know, who weren't the ones that have been waving their faces because they were in the communities mm -hmm. and yet you've got you know the, 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 the one of a better phrase incomers that have come in from wherever they are they came in the country they've clearly done things that haven't been appropriate and you can see more on around the house tonight at 10 45 here on rtv1 well next tonight two women being put at risk on building sites because they're having to wear protective equipment designed for men yeah, figures suggest up to two-thirds of women in the construction industry are using PPE that doesn't fit them, putting them at greater risk, of course, of accidents or even injury. Well, there is now an industry-wide campaign to make it more inclusive, as Amrit Birdie reports. There are strict rules around safety on construction sites, and for good reason. But despite women now making up around 14% of all construction workers in the UK, some women in the industry, like Caitlin Burns from Newcastle, say there are serious challenges when it comes to finding protective workwear. I've had a load of different brands. I've had men's clothing, I've had women's clothing, and they're just, unless you're paying quite a bit of money for the women's, you don't really get stuff that fit very well, which can have a massive effect on how work goes. The National Association of Women in Construction found almost 60% of women are having to wear PPE that's designed for men. Women in Construction Ambassador Michaela Wayne says despite some progress, it's still really hard to get hold of. Currently, soaps and uh, you're looking at a six-week wear and it's double and even triple the price of men's fitting PPE. And this isn't um, an issue of, oh, we want to be comfortable. It's a problem with health and safety. For instance, if a woman is wearing the new for a harness on site and that's not fitting appropriately, then this is serious risk for health and safety. And it just feels better as well. Leading the campaign to address this inequality is Katie Robinson, who showed me exactly why men's PPE just doesn't cut it on site. So you can see that they're quite long, kind of in the leg, very baggy around the calves, whereas when you get to the top, like this, this skin tight here in the thighs, and I can't even fasten them up. If we look at the curl, it's just generally oversized, too long, the arms are far too long. So yeah, this would make work very difficult out on site. It's really important that we do kind of kick women out with inclusive PPE because it's not just health and safety. Health and safety is the main part, obviously, but actually providing well-fitting PPE can be quite a, a big message to the women of the industry saying that you are welcomed, you are valued, and this is how we're going to show you. We're going to give you PPE that fits, PPE that's safe, and things like that.
the industry will continue to push the government for a change in PPE rules, a change that could help women in more ways than one. Amrit Birdy, ITV News. Well, it's that time of year when many of us are looking to book that holiday in the sun, wouldn't we? Yeah, given the fact we've had the greatest march in humans, <laughs> maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. But with our budgets being stretched more than ever before, making sure you get the value for money has never been more important. Well, ITV's Tonight programme has been looking at how to get the best deal and how to protect yourself from scammers. Kevin Ashford reports. Travel agents have reported their busiest start to the year ever with one in six of us planning at least three holidays this year. When you're going away, what is the most important thing? The cost. And the location. location we're going to. Food. Yeah, food, food, yeah. Drink. food, drink. Nice place to stay. Look, places, things to do. But with more getaways being booked than ever before, how can you make sure you're getting a good deal? I've got the official numbers so that you're not going to get the number one spot. Chelsea Dickinson has made a name for herself on social media as an expert in finding bargain breaks. The most important thing for finding a cheap holiday is to have a level of flexibility. That doesn't need to be just your date, it could be the duration. Okay. We tend to think about holidays in like 7 days, 10 days and 14 day blocks. Actually, by searching for 8 days, 9 days, you can sometimes get a cheaper holiday by doing it that way. However, experts say if a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Recent data shows victims lost a staggering £12.3 million to holiday fraud last year. Leandra Parrott booked a New Year break online for her family at a country cottage. But after driving for two and a half hours from their home, she realised they'd been scammed. The property didn't look how I imagined from the pictures I received. And then before I could think any further, the homeowner come on to the doorbell and said, I'm really sorry, are you here for a holiday? And I said, yeah, we're here for two days. And he said, I'm sorry to tell you, but we've had 10 families turn up um, just yesterday and today. And this is our home. It's not a, a holiday let. So it's a scam? Yeah, it's a big scam. Leandra did manage to get her money back because she'd been careful about choosing how she'd paid for her holiday. A lesson for us all as we try to get the most for our money during our time away. Kevin Ashford, ITV News. So be careful before you book. And you can see tonight, get away for less at half past eight on ITV and on ITV X. And the ITV evening news continues after us at 6.30. Coming up, how do you define an extremist? The government launches its new definition. Michael Gove announced the new measures which aim to clamp down on those who promote or advance violence, hatred or intolerance. We'll have the reaction. Also, what is happening to our high streets? New figures reveal the number of stores that have closed their doors at. They may not be our favourite friends in the garden, but slugs are getting an image makeover. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. On to sport briefing now and something that will possibly cheer up black and white fans because there's good news today for Anthony Gordon and good news as it turns out for Newcastle United. The Magpies winger has earned his first call-up to the senior England squad for the games against Brazil and Belgium later this month. Now that means the knee injury he picked up during the game at Chelsea on Monday night isn't serious and it could mean the 23-year-old might even be fit for Saturday's FA Cup quarter-final against Manchester City. Now, therapy dogs have been visiting care homes, hospitals and hospices for many years and now they're even becoming a useful tool in schools. Yes, as well as being a calming presence for children, they can also help improve attendance rates which have dipped post-Covid. Katie Cole has been to a primary school in Newcastle to see how therapy pup Fergus is making a difference. The start of a school day for Fergus and his owner, who was also the school counsellor at Welbeck Academy in Walker. He's not what is he classed as a usual school dog that has freedom to roam around the corridors. Fergus is used specifically in my room as a counsellor intervention because dogs have been known to reduce anxiety um, and to reduce stress. 
Pupils come to Heather for many reasons. And when Fergus is with her, there's understandably lots of excitement. Do you see children who have special educational needs or see children with autism or ADHD, um, speech and language delay as well. He listens and doesn't give any feedback. They can often pour their heart out. I'll see children who lost a family member, maybe the parents have separated, and they would like to come and just, just kind of, I suppose, just to offload their worries. And when it comes to his classmates, they give Fergus a glowing reference. He helped us with faith when I was feeling like sorry, made us happy because he was sitting next to us. He helped me to, to understand about animals and happiness. So I've got um, something I want to tell someone. I can like just like talk, like play with him to get off my mind. That might make him feel what? Dog trainer Nicola has come to check on how things are going and her skills are in demand. But since COVID, with the fallout in terms of the society's mental health and the um, kind of influx of children that are coming through with diagnoses of autism and ADHD, people are recognising that dogs can have a huge impact on those people in terms of supporting them. Dogs are also being used to improve attendance. Rates have fallen since the pandemic. Across the northeast, one in five pupils are persistently absent. We know that since COVID, a lot of children are struggling to engage in school learning and our dogs can help them to do that. Having that friendly, happy face with the waggy tail greet them can just be that little bit of confidence to help them cross over the threshold. Fergus also enjoys his time outside and he's been a big help to DJ, who likes a game of hide and seek. I just feel excited when I'm hiding because I'm thinking, is he going to, I think I can hear his paws. Is that, is that his collar? I, d I don't know. Is it him? Is it Heather? He helps a lot of people and it, help, it helps me a lot because of mental health and things like that. Back inside, it's time for Fergus to chill. Our canine friends are also proven to help with literacy. To them, there's no criticism. There's no being told it's wrong. I think it's just given a different dimension and a different aspect of helping children and knowing that he makes such a difference to them. It's really, it's really powerful actually. Fergus's working day is done. He can rest assured his contribution to school life is having a big impact. Katie Cole, ITV News, Newcastle. Oh, Fergus, you can come in. We'll play, we'll play hide and seek around the office with him, couldn't we? <laughs> 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 love that. Well, uh, Britain's favourite weatherman joins us in the studio. Have you been writing this again? <laughs> Stop. Because <laughs> I can't write. Say something nice. Uh, what have you got for us, popular man? <laughs> I've got clouds of rain, so I'm probably yeah, dropping yeah, in popularity. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks lovely from above, though. Um, this is the infrared just showing these real swirls of low pressure. It's still about four or five in the mix there. Again, fascinating from space, you maybe. About this you know, well, we very, well, very sad sheltered life. Uh, but yeah, the rain has been rolling as well. We've had a lot of rain recently. The water table is particularly high in our part of the world at the moment. This was the Derwent Reservoir there. So we don't need any more rain, but they are making the most of it at Wallington. Here's your silver lining. There's always one. Now, eight months ago, we saw the release of the beavers there. And uh, the team, well, very proud to release them. They're essentially living wild, and they have been doing some online updates when they catch them, but they have to use trail cams. And actually, overnight, they've got some lovely shots of them showing they really oh, are oh, fitting in there. Yeah. Thanks for this. They're happy, they're settling in, and they say their dams are now holding water in pools, and the channels are allowing water to spread over the floodplain, so it already is helping with the water management there. And the first frog spawn of the year has been spotted in the pools the beavers have created. So again, they're creating this ecosystem, so thumbs up to the beavers there. Absolutely. I think the rest of us, though, could do with a bit less rain. Oh, yes. If they're going to brighten up, let's take a look. Say hello to a period of calm. Weather. As we make our way through this evening and overnight, still some patchy rain around, cloud coming and going, holding those temperatures up though, quite mild heading into tomorrow. A bit of a messy day, further spells of rain, sometimes windy, particularly over higher ground. But there are some sunny spells in the mix through the next few days, particularly as we head into the first part of the weekend. Low pressure at the moment, never too far away. It is keeping things changeable. The wind's picking up at times, pushing through these areas of rain, some showers from the west. So we end the weekend with plenty of rain, but
but also the winds coming up from the south, lifting those temperatures a good few degrees above the average for the time of year. Back to the here and now, as we head through the late evening and overnight, we are seeing some clearer skies developing, but the clouds never too far away. And again, it's quite breezy, pushing through the odd shower into the early hours. And that combination there is holding temperatures up. The overnight lows around 9 or 10 degrees for many of us. That's slightly above the average daytime high for this time of year. So again, going into tomorrow, it's a mild, messy start. Now, as we've seen today, because we're towards the east of high ground with this feed coming in from the west, we are seeing some brighter breaks, some sunny spells developing. The heaviest of the rainfall most persistent the further north you go. Having said that, still fragmenting at times. Breezes coming in from the North Sea at times towards the coastal parts. The temperatures held down a little bit, but actually for many of us, certainly when we see those brighter breaks, highs of 13 or 14 degrees, so very much on that milder side. Later tomorrow and into Saturday, the cloud and the rain clears away. We're left with clearer skies and lighter breezes. Could even be a frosty start first thing on Saturday, but plenty of sunshine around, clouding over later. Tui sponsors ITV Tainty's Weather. And I think we're about done for another night. Oh, pretty much it in just a moment, the national and international news. I've got the late news at half past ten. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.